partners, welcome on back to the trading post. It's the Mercs of Mischief Shows times. Oh, it's been a big week, but uh, don't y'all forget about Deadlands over here because there's some real weird shit going on in paradise still. Let's see what you got for us, Kevin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Just for a second there, I thought you were running down, but I think somebody changed your batteries halfway through that sentence. That was really nice. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> and apparently the drugs have kicked in. Excellent. Just in time. Uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us for Deadlands. I'm going to, as always, before I forget, introduce all these wonderful storytellers who are with me. Uh, directly beside me over here, we have Hannah who is playing Miss Ellie. Uh, at the far end, we have another Edmontonian. I understand you guys are buried in horrible winter up there. Must be terrible. Yeah. No, it's I getting... can see snow from here, but it's really not that cold. It's, it's so cold. It's getting slushy. It's getting <laughs> slushy out. Uh, <laughs> uh, at the far end, Puck Lord of Chaos, our hey, hey. DM for the first two days of the week and then uh, comes here on Tuesdays. Uh, and down below... Sounds like a like a bad thing, but it really isn't. That's where you put the foundations of a house. Uh, Sarah playing Miss Alice, the thief, as it turns out. And at the very far, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> and at the very far end, uh, clad like it's cold where he is too. Uh, Sky playing our very own cowboy jet. You notice some uh, some is missing tonight. We'll get to that. Speaking of which, let's have all of you who are here take your three chips, please. And I have decided in my infinite wisdom that you should all get a legend chip for what you've been through for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been terrible. I've yeah, been <laughs> yeah, well, we, you're, you're going to pay. You're going. You're paying right now, actually, as we speak. Uh, okay. <laughs> so while you guys get those onto your sheets, I will tell the fine people what happened last week. Baptiste, our uh, shoot and pray, as he is otherwise known, left town on his very fast horse to ponder his past but not before Miss Alice flat out stole his magic badge, which causes everyone who touches it to see from the point of view of a lawman, gunfight after gunfight, horrible precision death followed by even more intense feelings and emotions of why and the youth of all these people that he was killing. It definitely, just to be clear, was not Baptiste. Somebody else. Uh, Ellie got a touch of that, just because she hasn't had enough abuse this month. Lucius had kind of a quiet week. Uh, he tinkered. He showed off his scythe. Everybody went, meh. And he went back to tinkering. He went out to the graveyard and got some dead people ready, and he took care of the ones that were still laying around town and the ones from the latest attack as well. And he is off doing that as we speak. He is now, unbeknownst to the rest of you, showing all the dead people his cool shovel scythe conversion trick. Uh, Willie, you saw some stuff. And then you warned Jet about his association with Raven. You thought that might be a bit um, way too deep for a young fellow like himself. Well, he's 80% sure that Raven's going to eat that boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then everything else was pushed from your mind as the magnificent, the amazing, the, and I quote, climbable like a tree. Princess Anastasia Romanov made her entrance into One-Eyed Willie's life. And One-Eyed Willie showed approval for her physical stature. And she showed approval for his approval by picking him up, taking him outside, and destroying a fair amount of the nearby wilderness in an evening of what can only be known as learning each other 
knowing each other in a very biblical sense. I want to point out that Willie is having an incredible retirement. He got to see some moving <laughs> pictures. It's crazy. He got to meet a Raven thing. And then he met this incredible Amazonian Russian woman and went out to the forest. I mean, this is great. And, uh, uh, Boys in Paradise, be... five stars, would return again. <laughs> Wildlife seem a bit shocked. Yeah. That's... You say return as if you're ever going to get to leave. <laughs> like he's ever going to get to go. <laughs> Uh, and then in a strange case of inversion, because it kind of happened the other way around last time, this time Jet got to see Miss Ellie's backstory before Miss Ellie did. But she did eventually see it. And I don't think it's too much to say it was awful. Charlie, the man at the bar, the man you kind of liked as a human being turned out to be your uncle who in an act of rage killed his own brother your father the man who did horrible things to you and because of that made your brother a wanted man for years <clears throat> and you only just found out that not only that said brother has been flung somewhere in time and space and you've got one time you can contact him but only if charlie agrees and charlie has said he won't do it until he's safe in this bar and with that i think we've covered all our bases we just to be clear miss alice you are currently where you are at the paradise dispatch correct? yep still still with, with uh, dan with dan comfort slash daniel clark uh willie is uh in the trees <clears throat> and the other two are uh sharing what might be an awkwardish embrace as ellie tries to recover from the shock of what she's just discovered and Jet, knowing what she just discovered, well, almost all of what she just discovered, just quietly sort of accepting this. So at that happy point in time and space, who wants to start? Oh, I should probably mention, there's a hell train crashed on the side of the road. There's two blocks of Paradise City that got destroyed by some kind of weird walking automaton. And there's a mountain I almost forgot about full of toxic rock that's on fire. Other than that, not much seems to be going on in this late afternoon. What a sleepy little town. Yeah, it's just like, oh, there's all this drama and all these things are going on. Oh, and by the way, hell has <laughs> arrived. Half of the town is destroyed. Yeah. Probably yeah. nothing to worry about. By all means, continue to start out your personal lives. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> now, this is a quiet time, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. yeah. And uh, Jet, looking over uh, Miss Ellie's shoulder, you see coming out of the wilderness... Uh, first, Miss Anastasia, looking fresh as a daisy, properly dressed, smiling, happy, and behind her, some distance behind her, limping, holding his ribs, and with his eye patch all askew and up on the forehead, comes an ecstatic one-eyed Willie. Uh, you know that look you give people and the moment they see you, they understand something's very wrong and to not, <laughs> be, to not feel any pleasant emotion in this place. That's yeah. the look I'm giving. It's just that very like. I'm going to mm -hmm. pick up on that. I'm like. <laughs> head off in the other direction. <laughs> and as you sort of ooh, ooh, turn around to go to leave, uh, she is a, a woman of many talents and skills, and she flicks up behind you at an enormous speed and just smacks your saggy old ass. And I Whack! fly 30 feet. <laughs> Echoes off the mountain. Like a football. Just <laughs> <laughs> 
and she smiles at you as you <laughs> wobble away and right yourself. No, most please. Willie's having an incredible vacation. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> I am impressed. Most Russian men, most non-Russian men don't survive. Well done. And she turns around and heads back. And you hear as as you're heading back, like you're going to bed, right? You're going to back to. No, oh, I ain't going to bed yet. Oh, okay. You're <laughs> heading back to into do. town. You hear besi- behind you, uh, she starts, you hear the sounds of hammering and song. She's going back to building her, her uh, building on the side of the bar. I love a girl with stamina. All right. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. (laughs) (laughs) There's only so many ways we could lighten this scene. I had to do this. I'm so sorry. Clearly, I won't need to uh, adjust my physique. Maybe a bit of time, a bit of training's in order. But I think I'll have a look around town. As I say, talking to myself as I go. Yeah. I was about to ask. <laughs> you go, like, no, look, like, occasionally around. Willie just talks to himself. He's a little weird. <laughs> the two of you in the middle of the street, um, people are leaving a space. Like, their your look, particular jet, is like given the like, do not cause shit look. Like the kind of big brother sort of thing, right? And uh, go. I don't wanna. <laughs> um, push. Um, I don't. And he's just, it's just really awkward. It's that lock. It's like, I don't think I should say anything, but I think I need to say something. Um, I don't. Uh, if you need to talk about it, but I'm not gonna, um, I know some of it, but I didn't mean to, it wasn't a, and he's just going to keep rambling until, (laughs) until something stops. No, I, I haven't lost my temper like that in a long time. I don't know what I would even say. How do you fix something that you've thought for years is the biggest mess you could possibly be in and then somehow in five minutes you find out it's actually infinitely worse? And um, I just kind of lean down and pick up a little shard of wood from nearby. And I just look at it. And I'm just like, I guess you just start picking up the pieces. And I just kind of toss it over at the bar. It fills a tiny little crack. You know, um... When I was eight, I think Carson would have been three. We had this old vase. I think it was one of my mom's or something. I don't know. Little tot ran around and smashed that thing to bits. And he cut his finger and it was bleeding. But the only thing he was worried about was the fact that he thought I'd be mad about it. (laughs) He just kept looking at me and he was like, I'm sorry, Ellie. I'm sorry. I'll be good next time, I promise. And he tried to put it together himself and couldn't quite understand that that's not how vases worked. And I just kind of hit it and told him to go to sleep. And my dad kicked the shit out of me for it. But when I told him, I did it. But the fact that when I could go to bed later, bruises hidden and told him that it was okay. The look he gave me, it always made it worth it. You know, I'm, I get why Charlie did it. God knows I wanted to kill him myself, but I didn't do it because of Carson. 
that was... I feel like we're all put on this earth for a reason. My reason was to protect my little brother. But after things got worse with my dad, I, I couldn't take it and I couldn't stand to see what it would do to him. And I left and then everything went to shit. And I'm, I'm, I'm furious. At Charlie, don't get me wrong, but I'm more mad at myself. This whole, it's all my fault and I just don't know how to fix it. And now there's magic involved and so now I really don't know how to fix it. I'm sorry, it's not like you can fix it. No, I, I don't reckon I can. Um, I'll certainly be along for the ride to help, but I think there's a lot of things you have to decide about how you feel about this before you can start moving forward. Like, regardless of the reasons and the whys, how you feel about that man in there and what he did, because I have no right to say anything about it, but... I know that's something you'll have to decide first. Yeah. So, as far as magic's concerned, my mom always told me to go look for the magic in the world, so I'm already on that road, as you can tell, and I look at my arm. <laughs> Did your mom ever tell you that go look for the magic and possibly cut yourself repeatedly for it? No, but, and I just kind of think back to, it all kind of hits me at once because she was talking about her brother. So I'm thinking about Bart and I'm thinking about mom and dad and I'm just kind of zoning out for a second. And I'm like, I, um, <sighs> you, keep, you keep seeing tarot cards just twirl by the same three over and over. I, uh, I don't understand magic. I don't know if it's something you're ever supposed to, but I, I don't know. It's the one thing she always seemed to put a lot of, of stake in. So it's the one thing that I, I don't know. Something about it. Something, something draws me to it. So I'm always going to find it, regardless of the cost, probably. That's just the thing. It seems every time I learn a bit of, more about magic, it seems there's always a cost. Sometimes it's worth it, at least in my experience. But I think we've been out in the street long enough. I think we should probably... What time of day is it? It's late afternoon. I think we should at least go catch up with the others and maybe get some food or something, because, lordy, these are, a brain can't work on an empty stomach. Yeah, oh God, I've been sobbing in front of a bunch of people. That's embarrassing. Nah, oh. I, I just kind of clap her on the back of the shoulder. It, it ain't nothing. Ellie, you look around and... <clears throat> At first, you notice nobody's looking at you. Then you notice they're very willfully not looking. They're showing respect. That's the locals. This town may be full of weirdos, but maybe they're not all so bad. Well, for... I just kind of, like, brush his shirt, which is now definitely wet. For that, how about I buy you a drink? Yeah, I'll take a shot of milk at the bar. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Milk is one of the easiest things I can make. Oh, so that brings up a question. You're 50 feet from the remains of the end of the line. And the saloon number one is all the way across town. 
Where are you going for this drink? Uh, I'm not walking back in the end of sl- I am... If I punch him, if I see him, I'm either going to punch him or shoot him, and I do not know which one it is. Don't know if it'll make a difference either, but... So you guys turn and walk away, <clears throat> and you don't look back. But if you did, you'd see a very sad old man looking out a window. Just watching you go. And he disappears. Miss Alice. Uh-huh. You have in your possession a thing. Yep. This thing has done things to your mind. You directly in your head that no science you know of could possibly explain. There's the key phrase that I know of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan has uh, you're still sitting on the floor after you helped Eldie up or did you stay in there? Uh, <clears throat> I, probably, uh, I probably wouldn't sit back down. The yeah. main reason I sat on the floor was to kind of get on Ellie's level. Sure. So you as you stand up and help her up uh, as she leaves uh, he walks over bends over picks that bottle and the two glasses up off the floor and puts them on the table and he looks at you as the door closes and he says "Uh, perhaps wine instead Alice absolutely and into that bottom drawer again and the remains it's not a whole bottle this time I mean even he has you know some some financial limitations, but he's got a half a bottle of that same hand-labeled French wine, and he pours each of you a glass and quietly hands it to you. So, uh, you're, um, you're uncharacteristically quiet. As he's talking, she's storling it, and she'll kind of, I'm going to kind of stare off into space for a second. You can see out of the corner of your eye, he is looking at you in full journalist mode. He is watching every move you make. He is reading you as close to a book as he can. And and just take a sip and then kind of sit the glass down. For once... I've encountered something that I have no explanation for. Everything else, the card tricks, the ghost steal, everything. I can think of some logical reason that these things would be happening. But this shit, she holds up the badge. I don't know what in the hell happened when everybody is touching this thing and why Baptiste has it. And I know it ain't his because those memories are not him. And he nods and he says, I've seen your, I've seen your skinny old friend. Definitely not him. Did you feel the, and he stops after when the shooting's done and he's kind of wobbling back and forth between Dan's uh yeah the the feelings that whoever this was felt how the hell do you do that And Alice has flashes of all those yeah. young faces, just those young, young and faces. Probably, that, I mean, she's she's young. Most of them are younger than you. Yeah. And most outlaws were. They were sort of, yeah. I hate to say this, but they were like 15 to 21 was most of these outlaws because anybody older than that smart enough to know it's a real short lifespan in that career choice. 
But it's the dichotomy between that pain of having done it and the absolute coldness with which it's done. There is zero emotion when he's targeting and knocking down these bad people. And there's no question in his mind that they're bad. But they're kids. It's like some sort of switch flip. And he just, from what I've seen, every time there comes a point where he picks a gun back up and just keeps going again. Knowing you think that it's going to be those same young faces. How do you figure your uh, sickly friend came to have that? I don't know. His, I, I mean, I know he was friends with Wild Bill and Jane. He grins, yeah. And his, when I looked at it, his duster was two stitched together and this was between them. Like he was hiding it. Yeah. That's one theory that I have. Hiding or protecting, I do not know which, maybe both. And he switches back to full Dan comfort mode and he says, Miss Ellie, I'm going to tell you something about that man you think you know. Big swig. <laughs> Big swig. <laughs> That man should have been dead 40 years ago. You mean like something happened 40 years ago that should have killed him? He looks down at the blotter where he had done the math before and then scratched it out and says, not precisely, Miss Alice, more like if you add up the timeline, he's been in too many places with too many people too many times. You saw the corral, miss? You know what that is? A massacre? Your, uh, your friend, Baptiste. Is the invisible sixth man, miss. How many were there at the OK Corral? Five. Or were there? So, so are we saying that even if these memories aren't him, maybe he was there at some or all of them? He has an amazing ability, madam, and he's switched back now, to be not there, to disappear, not only from memory, but from history itself. There's no mention of him in the stories of Wild Bill and Calamity Jane. Not I mean, I was at a party with this man, and I do not... I, could, I didn't Don't remember. Don't remember. How did you meet him, miss? Do you remember? Well, I remember when how I met him when he came into paradise. Before that, no. You did not recognize him even though you had seen him before. You had forgotten him. Yeah, I mean, I w it must have been, what would that have been, like 10 years ago, I think? 
That's what we said that party was. Think real hard, Miss. Did he look exactly the same as he did now? Uh, Alice is trying to remember. Yeah, he does. Every bit as close to dead as he did now. Uh, does this kind of come in a flash? Yeah. Like as she's like, as he's like saying this, and it kind of triggers it. Uh, let me give it to you this way: you get a series of flashes of maybes of places in your whole timeline where maybe there's moments you don't remember. Maybe that's not the only other time you ever met this man. Okay. Um, I'll tell I'll tell Dan that. This. I'm never lost for words, man, but I am at lost for words. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to do. I mean, he just rolled into town like it was nothing. Right take... at the time that that train crashed. I and he's believe... been helpful. He hasn't not been helpful, but How in the hell did he come here? And why? I want to know why in the hell he is here! You're going to have to ask him yourself, ma'am. And, she and then you're going to have to hope you can remember. She picks up the wine glass and her hand is like shaking and she's like, mm -hmm. Ugh, and she she takes another sip and um, she says, I would love to ask him, but he seems to always be running out of town. Also, how is his horse that damn fast? With all due respect, Miss Alice, that's your biggest concern? It's one of many concerns I have. Uh-huh. And he starts reaching over with the bottle to pour another glass for you, and he looks at you like, do you want... Yep. Drain the bottle. Puts the empty back in the bottom drawer. I'm going to have to ask him all of these questions and more when he gets back. But in the meantime, I'm going to spend every second I can with this. Be careful, she, Miss Alice. Uh, that man, if he's who we think he is has been around death so long. It's in his nature. Be careful, Miss Alice. Uh, and I'm going to um, kind of, I, I feel like almost in a daze, um, but the, take the badge and put it on my person um, and and just really kind of without even thinking about it probably get up wine taking the wine glass and all and just slowly kind of walk out as you're heading towards the door you hear him behind you clear his throat a little bit and say uh, Miss Alice would it be all right if I Made some more of those ghost rock daguerreotype prints. I've got a bit of a business idea. And, uh, Miss Alice, if you don't... Uh, I'd appreciate it if you held this close to your chest, but I want to raise some money and get the hell out of this town. Uh, she'll, she'll kind of stop, and she kind of, like, comes back a little bit. And she turns, and she says, As long as you remember whose idea your little business venture started with. And he just... Yes, and then, ma yes, ma Miss Alice. 
<laughs> and then he and switches then, accents again and says, I'm, I'm thinking actually I might go back to London. It's got to beat the hell out of this place. There's corruption she's, everywhere, isn't there? And she's just going to shake her. She's just shaking her head. And she just walks out with the wine glass. Yep. Just walking and down the street with a wine glass full of wine. Yep. And behind you in his office, he pulls open the top drawer, pulls out a copy of the London Times newspaper and starts reading the help wanted ads. Willie, you stumble back into town. Willie is going to take this moment that he has alone and he's going to go check out this train wreck. Okay. This is disturbing to say the least from a distance it looks like a carnival train like the skulls look fake and the big spikes on it look comical almost right until you get closer and realize that they these spikes are razor sharp there's nicks and cuts on them where they've struck bone uh -huh. these skulls are real they look fake because they've been on here so long that they're old and aged and round and smooth there's still heat coming off the boiler. The, bo the water itself is long gone, but the fireplace where the ghost rock burns is still warm. I see. Make a scrutinized check for me, please. Oh, boy. And do some non-role-playing stuff. We're going to roll a skill here. Scrutinize. Where's my scrutinize? There it is. Ho-ho! Okay. Well, that's a low number. <laughs> yeah, that's a really low number. So, yeah, um, what you dis what you basically reconstruct is what must have happened. Uh, that much, at least, is obvious. This mm -hmm. train came out of that hole up in the top of the mountain, right. around the mountainside, burned a bunch of damage on the way down, smashed through three or four buildings, uh, and into this tent city. Okay. Uh, in the process, there's a this demonic engine. Behind it, there's a small coal-type car, but it's got ghost rock in it. And then behind that, there's three carriages. Right. So piled one on top of another and one off to one side like it's been hurled on someone's leg or something. Almost like somebody's leg was crushed. <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah. There's even a pit where a leg was dug out. It's really I, I, I wouldn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So the first thing I want to do mm -hmm. uh, is is there still a, a shovel in the engine car. Uh, yeah, there's one in the wreckage. It's easily easy enough to find you. Yeah. I'm going to grab that shovel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up a load of ghost rock. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. And I'm open up the boiler and just chuck a little bit inside and see if there's any reaction. Okay. Uh, this ghost rock is kind of like super cold. Yeah. The idea is it burns 100 times hotter and 100 times longer. So you take this bit, and because it's been chewed up yeah. and uh, used for fuel, it goes in and just immediately erupts. You just barely get the door to the, the boiler closed in time before the blast of heat would have singed you. And there's almost immediately... Uh, it, there's again, there's no there's no water in the boiler. It's cracked, but there's so much heat that the metal starts to ping and pop and twist and shape. The whole shape of the train starts to twist. You can feel it vibrating as the front of it sort of comes up off the ground. Oh, you still got a little bit in you. All right, <laughs> and uh, well, he's gonna take out his rifle and just mm -hmm. casually load the new bullets that he got from Jet into them. Sure. And he's just going to walk through the passenger cars, whichever ones that he can get into, and mm -hmm. just kind of whistling to himself and uh, scrutinize them to see if there's anything of interest for him there. Give me another scrutinize check now that you mention it. Certainly. <laughs> I like help. That's, a, that's, that's a better that's number. Better. That's better. <laughs> Um, you go through the carriages and what you find in there is a lot of blood and a lot of mess. Um, okay. You reconstruct that. Almost, almost like there was a train crash. <laughs> well, yeah, but there's, it's more than that. It's like uh, all the windows are broken, but they're all broken on going out. So some, it's see. like something smashed through the glass, grabbed things and pulled them in here and killed them in here. There's too much blood. 
And as you work your way through the two cars that aren't on their sides, you go to the out to the third one, you look back towards the engine and that front is continuing to bend as the metal heats. And there's a little, like a, a, a divot or a hole underneath where the front of that engine used to be. And out of it, there's a little flap of blue cloth. A very recognizable blue. You're wearing it. Well, now that is interesting. I'm going to take a look around because, I mean, he's seen some weird shit before. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, this whiffs, this whiffs of a trap. So he's yep, going to sure. come over. Yeah. Uh, you know, rifles loaded. And uh, he's going to walk over to it and just poke it with the muzzle of the gun a little bit. As you get close, you see that this bit of cloth is, in fact, the corner of a great coat. Yeah. And that coat goes down into this hole. And you can see just down into the hole, you see a hand, just a pale white hand that's been obviously buried under the train since this crash happened several days ago. Huh. And attached to that is a blue sleeve. And on the blue sleeve, you see an odd thing. This is a captain. So he's got okay. his one stripe. Yeah. And above that, where on your jacket, there's a very nice picture of a man on a horse. Yeah. Cavalry symbol. This, there's a picture. It, it almost looks like a human, but it's all made out of very rectangular and squarish blocks. And it has no head. There's definitely a body under here, but you'd have to at least get down on a knee to look to see if there's any more. All kind of sense in the else. world and you making none of it. All right. Well, I'm going to grab that shovel again. Mm -hmm. I'm dig it out a little bit. You pull out a couple shovelfuls and as you make space, that hand just goes and you got it for a second because, yeah. oh shit, but it's just removing the dirt. And you kind of get down and look in, and you can see just in that little bit of light that you've revealed, just sort of half a face. Mm -hmm. just that half, the other half's behind something. And the white, glazed, open eye, and it blinks. And the hand goes, and vibrates. And then... <clears throat> Yeah, that's probably not normal. And as the shock wears off, you see that that whole side of the face, it's like the skin is melted and it's running off of the skull. There's no sanity left in that eye, but whatever's under there is still alive. Well, son, I apologize I didn't find you sooner, but I'll best put you out of whatever misery you win. <laughs> and yeah <laughs> paradise is in a valley and oh, yeah. you hear the echo just echoes <laughs> all the way out and maybe it's guilt from other days but right in the last second you swear you saw a moment of clarity and a moment of thanks but also a moment of confusion. And you realize he's looking at your sleeve with the horse and he looks confused. And then poof, what remains of his head explodes as you shoot it in the dark. Certainly not what I was expecting to find. Well, I don't want to leave this body underneath this train. <laughs> you, would we all hear that yes. Echo, yeah. um, and, and and narratively speaking, it happened right at the end of those two other scenes. So yeah, right now, just... I imagine I would be just walking out of the. Yep, you're just walking out. These two are just turning and heading towards the saloon number one for milk shooters. Apparently, uh, I'm going to make an alcoholic in this game. Damn it! One of you is going to leave this game as an alcoholic. <laughs> And it's not even it's give me a chocolate milk. <laughs> we need to get we need to get Jed into white Russians. <laughs> oh, we already got Willie into, into a white Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There it is. 
I get I delivered it to you. I was glad. I'm glad somebody picked up on it. <laughs> oh Lord! Look, we know how to handle our issues. Uh, you know, healthily, just straight up murder. And <laughs> as Alice walks through town with a wine glass in her hand. Yeah, have that one. <laughs> Me and Jet know how to handle it. <laughs> uh, wine drunk is a whole different thing. Okay, it's classy drunk. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess at Stumbling that down the street in the middle of the afternoon, here it yeah. it's red wine. Fuck off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excuse me. It's, it's classy. It's, 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 having a classy time. <laughs> it's a wine, a wine glass. Mm. But I, I guess I would go towards the sound of a freaking gunshot in the middle of town or in the op, to the side of town, I guess, technically. The other two. Uh, Got shot just behind you, back by the bar. I guess those drinks will have to wait. Never a dull moment, huh? Never. And I'll pull my, I guess, shotgun out. Yeah, I grab my pistol. I'm going to say Alice is walking up and she hears the comment about the drinks will have to wait. And she says, wow. And just drapes <laughs> <just laughs> his on by with her wine glass. I, I don't understand. <laughs> and they, the locals are just not quickly, but very obviously just moving away from that into town. They just they want nothing to do with this. It was let's, one gunshot. Let's just let's go about our day. Now, yep. Alice I mean, is pulling out her, pulling on out her rifle. Level, so I've got a glass yeah. of wine in one hand and a rifle in the other. <laughs> There is, I mean, the tent, like the tent trailer is down there, so, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, but I'm not barefoot and pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. So is this how they know that we're, you know, I feel like they're walking by and they're just like, tourists. <laughs> <laughs> Making well, a scene in the middle of town, then walk through with a rifle and wine. You guys uh, have noticed that uh, given what you've done for this place since you've been here already, you are getting a lot of respect from these locals who live in what is obviously a very hard little town. So, yeah. You guys make your way to the sound. The train wreck that almost seems normal to the three of you now because it's been here since, like, practically you were here, you know. And it's all twisted up at the front. Make your own jokes, uh, Willie jokes, if you will. It's all twisted up at the front, and Willie's out at the front digging underneath it with a shovel. Uh, is it still like move? Is the front of it still moving? It, it is. Uh, you notice uh, that somebody has stoked the fire. the uh, The boiler box is quite red and glowing, and that's what's causing this whole front end to lift. Uh. You planning on stealing a train, Willie? <laughs> I just want to do a little bit of an experiment. You never had any curiosity about this thing? Uh, nope. I saw enough of it when it was on top of me, to be honest. Oh, that explains that hole. Yeah. <laughs> Alice kind of makes this face kind of like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, someone, someone blew it up on top of me. Twice. I see. No, but... the first one didn't end up on me. It just almost. Oh, that's right. Ended up almost. On me. That's right. The second the one first... ended up on me. There was foreshadowing, and then there was yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the first one blew him, blew a Bahamut on top of me. Right. Yeah. That's what we did. Right. Yeah. So here, have a demon. Yeah. That's yeah, what we did. That's what you did. I have great <laughs> dynamite. Well. <laughs> I do apologize. I did not mean to startle anyone. I saw the most delicious looking jackrabbit up there and I just had to take a shot. But you know what? My old eye ain't as good as it used to be. Uh, but I, I'm just having a look around this train. Now, it certainly does interest me. I'm having uh, quite uh, the exciting retirement. Uh, but I've never seen it quite like it. So I decided to mess around with it a little bit. Well, what's in there? Well, uh, looks like a union fella. So I figure, you know, per professional courtesy, I'll probably dig him out and uh, give give him something proper. Can't leave him under the train, of course. There was I was just trying to remember if it was all union soldiers that have been. 
it, this uh, this blue uniform has no business being here. Okay. And that the arms that reached out of the train when it originally when this was happening, and they were reaching out and pulling. It well, was very hard to tell because they were basically demonic forms, essentially, okay. right, looking for human hosts. Well, not in Alice's mind, but sure. No. <laughs> it, it was clearly a train Crazy people. full of yeah. people, and this is some kind of random attack. Yeah. It's a costume of some sort. Um, <laughs> well, there were a lot of innocent bystanders that were pulled into the train. Did you find a lot of people in there? There. I did not find anything inside. I took a long walk through all these train cars, and I did not find a single person. Now, I, I, I ain't no big city detective or anything like that, but I know a battlefield when I've seen one, and this looks a lot like an ambush cop. You roll up, people interested, you drag them in, your knife does the talking, and you're done. So my question for all of you would be, who's got it out for y'all? Nobody that would catch themselves on in this hellscape of a town. It's not well, for me. Well, madam, far be it for me to 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 judge your your intelligence and your pedigree, but it does seem like somebody went through a great deal of effort to stage this for you. So maybe someone. <laughs> Not for me. Maybe for one of these hard working folks. She she thinks very <laughs> delicately about how she says what, what she says there. I just Miss, I just gave Miss Alice plays luck, shit rolls so. downhill. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Hannah. I just, just kind of like side eye at Jet, just kind of mm -hmm, hard working folk. See normal people. Harder working she's ever worked a day in her life. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I you did right I'm about that, darling. I am new in town. How long has this been here? A few days. How long have we been here? A couple. I want to say maybe four a or five days. Yeah. Maybe a week. Maybe a week. Yeah. God, it's only been a week. Yeah. No, it can't right? be a week yet because there's no oh way I've done seven God. dreams for you. I, you, you <laughs> sneaky uh, bastard, by the way, got away without one last time. You got a whole night's sleep. Well, you, <laughs> I, my fault. I, I, you got a whole night's sleep. Hey, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How hey, dare you sleep uh, soundly? I asked if I needed to roll for that, and you said, I'll let yep. you know the next time you don't. <laughs> yep. And I did it. It's my fault entirely, but I'm going to make you pay. So, oh boy. <laughs> now, now to get this straight, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. A death train rolls into your town, well, our town. ready to ambush. It's okay, rolls into the town you are currently occupying. Ready to ambush. Drags a bunch of people in, kills them dead. And you don't ask why it came here. I can probably. We were, we were a little busy fighting the. There is no the curiosity band. left in the young. <laughs> oh, I've asked many questions. Been a little distracted. And, and at the time, <laughs> again, we were busy fighting the big red whatever that came out. Of Madam, you said days. <laughs> yeah. If I miss my hearing. And well, and then there was an explosion in town that we had to deal with. And, and the then the mine up there alive. is smoking. And Look, I and understand and how and things can get away from you. Know, we're all very busy. <laughs> it has been a triumph that we have gotten anything done in this damn town. Well, Just wait a day or two. Something will explode, I'm sure. There's a ding <laughs> as the door of the boiler is blown off of its hinge from the heat that was inside it, and it just goes whistling across the wreckage and smashes into the trees. Boy, that's burning for a while. I thought I'd just put a little bit in. Uh, what did you put? Did you put coal in there? <laughs> no, nah, I picked up some of the gross 
that ghost rock and uh, chuck you it put in ghost it. rock back in this damp and you look I want to see if there'd be a reaction. <laughs> there's smoke coming out of the boiler. Oh, Clearly, there is. That horrible oh, white, some yellowy smoke. And now that you listen, you can hear that. So, here's the next question. Y'all consider maybe tipping this thing over, fixing that boiler, and seeing where it goes. I mean, where there's the, there's no the train track ends right there, so I don't really know. Yeah, I'm sure going. this follows all the conventional laws of physics. It looks real normal to me. <laughs> do you want to see the hole that it came out of? We actually do need to deal with that mountain, by the way. <laughs> that's just up there smoking. I just wanted to know if it still works. And from the sounds of all that ping and metal, well, maybe not so much anymore, but it looks like it might. Sir, I don't know if if this did go anywhere, I don't think you'd want to be going there. Well, we maybe talk. if we went there, we could uh, introduce that person to perhaps some better ideas than coming back here. Well, he, okay, so we were, we were hurting him in the fight, but he seemed real confused by that for one, which was odd. Imagine how confused he'd be if we break into his house with his vehicle. I imagine he'd be I mean, quite perturbed. <laughs> I mean, I was far too acquainted with him last time. I, if I never yeah, see him again, that will be good for me. He's and Alice will, it, she's, she'll take the tip of her rifle and draw that Y symbol in the dirt. You know, Ooh, the, yep. the crooked the Y. From that mark, yep. yeah, and, and she's going to say, does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Have I ever seen this? <laughs> Um, you know what uh, soldierly men believe all kinds of things yeah you have seen this um, this is the symbol of uh, what your your believer would call a god of death so for those soldiers who have just given up on their fate like they're either going to die or they're not going to die that's the sort of soldier that would worship this and seen that crudely tattooed into the arms of men that no longer cared ah that's a death god symbol. Symbol yeah, well, for quitters. Yeah, well, that's the symbol that was on the mountain this train came out of and of the cultist members that summoned this thing. By killing an innocent man on some sort of shrine thing. Yeah, there was looked like some sort of sacrifice situation. All right, well, I'm going to finish my business here. This is all real interesting to me. I'd love to know where this train goes and if she can be fired up again. So, so where that comes from is currently on fire with a ghost rock and could. Yeah, we, we really need to deal with that mountain. <sighs> we always have to deal with something. Yeah. I'll be on board for that as well. And she's going to look at Willie again. She's gonna, and see, this is why we haven't been able to ask questions about the damn train because we've had so many other damn issues. All right, all right, if you say so. Far be it for me, I haven't been around. We've also had jittering just, dead people. I mean, it's just... Just seems odd to me is all. <laughs> jittering dead people and, and all sorts of things. Well, Willie, you'll The wolves, remember the wolves? The oh, my Lord, the wolves. Oh, I hope to learn everything about it. I'm quite enjoying my retirement so far. I rather like this place. Well, you are far more than welcome to take my place here and stay while I can get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, by the way, I was going to ask you, is there any way I could requisition one of them moving pitches? Maybe commission a special one get made? Well, what up? I mean, they only last for two to three seconds. Let's say a friend of mine. <laughs> I, I think two or three seconds would be just enough. <laughs> <laughs> And Alice is Alice doesn't know. <laughs> Alice does not know. So she's just like, okay. I'm like, I mean, uh, <sighs> I suppose. Excellent. And you know what? Who's the? Friend? I think my friend might be able to help me write this train. Who are you talking? She's about? got some incredible strength. I ain't saying nothing. Oh, are you talking about <laughs> Anastasia? Anastasia. What a fine woman she is. Yeah, that's see when I knew when I met her. God, what was what was that like? 
probably because that was a couple days before we came into town. So that was probably all like a little over a week ago. Yep. I say like, I knew when I met her that she was she was a force to be reckoned with. That's why. Oh, well, she is to, indeed. I tried. <laughs> I tried to. Uh, well, I did. I told her to told her to go up to Canada. I never thought she'd come back. Two days. Yeah, in a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she she is a false, uh, to be sure. You notice he's not quite standing straight, like maybe there's a cracked <laughs> rib over here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, Willie didn't kiss and tell. He's going to leave it ambiguous. No, nope, nope, absolutely, yeah. Um, he's a gentleman. He doesn't want to besmirch a young lady's honor. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to get back to what I'm doing here. Apologize for startling you all. I did, that rabbit looked delicious. Had to have it. <laughs> Sky's dying. <laughs> Brown, I believe you me. You said I was in deep and coming from someone who may very well be in deep. You don't want to go where this goes. You don't want to march through hell with a water pistol. What yeah, but maybe I can ride through water. hell and the maybe I can ride through hell in the devil's stagecoach. Wouldn't that be an experience? <laughs> Probably a short one. A deadly one, too. Okay, but for real though, we got a smoke in mind. What <laughs> also, has anybody seen Lucius? He's <laughs> the dead bodies, I think. Oh, of course he is. Oh, are we sure that boy ain't dead himself? Lord have mercy, he spent so much time with the dead. Uh, he, he did look a little pale. I don't know if that's normal or no. I don't know if I, anything about him is normal. I'm going to bed. I'm going no, to you go off to bed. I apologize. I didn't mean to disturb y'all. I'm dragging it you out here. It's dinner time. Like it's, oh, dinner time. Like, okay. Um, I need it's, to go to it Anastasia. It was late afternoon. It's now in that sort of late afternoon slash early evening. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go get some dinner, but I need to go to Anastasia for a refill on my Russian vodka first. Absolutely. So yeah, not a problem. You can go and see her. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, the other two, uh, Jet and Miss Ellie, you guys were on your way for drinks. So back for that. Yeah, uh, just dinner and whatever. I guess I don't know. Might as well eat. Okay. So you we guys have to head back towards the water. saloon. You head off to there. Willie, you're left alone. I finished my work. <laughs> you keep digging. And two things become immediately obvious once you get a little more dug out. This fella got hit by the train. Okay. Uh, he is on the front of the train. Okay. And this uniform's not right. The hat's not the right shape. The symbols aren't right on it. The medals are slightly different. It's not like they're fake. But they're not the same as yours. I tear and off any I, yeah. I tear off any identifying markers, like patches, medals, and those kind of things, and I keep those. Okay. Yeah. So I gotta figure that out. Uh and then I bury this this gentleman because even though I there's something super weird about it. Uh, he was definitely in some kind of misery, and he does wear my colors. So the way absolutely, he goes. you notice uh, two things. One is the the medals. Ninety nine percent of them, in fact, all of them, you can recognize what they are. They're that close to yours, but the ribbon's a different color, or they're a hexagon instead of a circle, or the horse faces the other way. Except there's no horses. Every time there would be a horse, if this was a cavalry badge or a cavalry officer. There's these little metal men that in the same bizarre. stitching. Just what kind of company were you in, boy? And the cut of the jacket's not quite right. So bizarre. All right, and well. You get him buried deep and you fill in the hole. So it looks like just a rabbit hole under the train. I'll fill in the hole. Light. My second of my, well, my 
second last cigar. I'm going to need to get more. (laughs) Have a smoke. Give him a little salute. Uh, check on that boiler one more time. <laughs> Make sure it's see if it's yeah. gone down yet. <laughs> now that the door is blown off of it, it's still burning, but there's a place for the heat to go. So it's, like it's smoldering yeah. down. Yeah, and the uh, the engine is slowly starting to settle to the side. It's not going to go back where it was, but it's settling sort of to the side as it as it cools off. Maybe we will see where you can go. Maybe we will. But I have a little smoke, and then I go back for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you walk around it a couple times while you're having your cigar. It would be a lot of work, but with the you know with some engineering and some you know some hard I, and I, work. And maybe. I think back to that pale fella who was showing off his scythe, and I'm like, I bet you he's got some know-how. Maybe yeah, you just need a good tinkerer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you head back as well, uh, Miss Alice. Where were you going? It was someplace very specific. Anastasia. Right. So you I want to see. Uh, well, because and and because we were just talking about her, she's like, I need to, go, I need to go see her. Yep, absolutely. I her to so you that he is what you want. She, if by tea you mean alcohol, then yeah. The <laughs> so yeah, you you cruise over there and you hear the banging and hammering and sawing of uh, of Ms. Anastasia building the uh, 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 her building right beside the bar. Um, uh, and as, yeah. I was well. I was gonna kind of poke my head around the corner, and and be like, "Previous Anastasia, Miss Alice, come in, come in." She just drops the hammer and just comes over to you and just <laughs> yep picks you up. And Alice is again doing the thing where it's like ah! vodka, and she hands you the the big hip flask. Uh, Alice is gonna pull hers out, and she's she's like, "Ah, I need a refill, actually." She goes, okay, give me. And she she tries to take the uh the specially shaped one. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, and hers, and she's like closes one eye and uh, sticks her tongue out and and gets most she's of it on her hand. She's not very dexterous. <laughs> no, she's also hammered. Uh, she gets most of it on her hand and finally fills it up and she pours until like, it's actually coming out of the top. And she's like, yeah. here you go. Here you go. I'll Put take just a little, just a little sip off the top just to get it to where I can like screw the that's the good stuff. I am celebrating. What? Cele- uh, the celebrating your new place, I imagine. Well, that a little bit. It's not done yet. What I was celebrating is already done. Which is? <laughs> he is quite handsome, don't you think, for a one-eyed older man? Um, so... Uh... Do what now? The colonel. He is he is attractive, yes. Man in uniform and all that, yes. I mean if you think so, then I guess that's all that matters. <laughs> and she's just grinning like she wants to just blurt everything out in this massive girl on girl talk, but he's she, not your he's face. not really he's <laughs> not really my type, but um Sure. He reminds me of Russian bear. Damn it. Alice, I hate you, you bitch. Okay, Alice is going to say, what, like, hairy? He is hairy and cuddly and likes to hug. All right, well, when did this, when in the hell did this all happen? He just got here. How long does it take, even when you are really going? I guess you have a point. Uh, and Alice is going to like look around to see if there's anybody around. And does she have a building yet? There's kind of she's framing it in, so that she's kind of put up one wall to sort of stop the wind. But mostly, <laughs> for the most part, it's just framed on the inside. Right next to you, the bar is probably seventy-five, eighty percent done. Okay, so there's, but there's no there privacy in the in the vicinity of. Well, direct. where you guys are right now, the door is kind of between you and town, so nobody can see you where you are. Just the two of you. Okay. Um. Well, I'll indulge her. We can talk. We'll talk about it. Um. Okay. And and <laughs> and, but I do want to ask her uh, if she has any wine. 
You are trying to woo a Frenchman? Apparently, I'm trying to be a Frenchman. And Alice will, she'll, she'll turn her wine glass that she, I guess, is still holding sure. upside yeah. down. And it, like, nothing comes out. <laughs> She's like, it's empty. You could put very much vodka in that, yes. Well, vodka is, uh, I, I prefer it uh, in smaller doses. Oh, wait, wait, I was in Canada. I have rye whiskey. And she pulls out a bottle. It's actually in a brown, uh, black cardboard tube. And it says CC on it in gold letters. This Canadian club is good. Um, Absolute shit. It's I really not. am <laughs> going to. Horrible uh, I don't really want any, but I'm going to indulge her. And and she just tries to like, hand you the whole tube bottle. Okay. I'll take the tube and, and pour like this much into the bottom of my wine glass. Yeah. It's the color of weak tea. And I'll hand it back to her. And then I'll indulge her in her stories that I imagine I guess, she wants to tell. I guess I am drinking this. I am dating an American now. She has the shot of right. Wait, date? Or wait, dating? Are you... So is this an Anastasia, ongoing thing? Anastasia, princess of the Russians, does not give it away for free. Oh, <laughs> I would never expect so. Willie, it's you're like I said. <laughs> it's like I said when I met you. Um, there's absolutely no reason to marry unless it's for love. Exactly. <sighs> and she pours herself another big shot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I and love every Alice, part of this. <laughs> Alice is just like Alice is just like William Anastasia. What in the world? And she's like, she's picturing how tall Anastasia is and how, how, like, how short in comparison Willie is. And yep. she's just like, and old and beat up. And yeah. Yeah. And it's like, she, it kind of hits her finally, like what he was talking about before. And she's mm -hmm. like, God, Lord have mercy. Okay. And she's like, I really. She's gonna say, Anastasia, I guess we have a project to work on because I made a promise, unfortunately. A promise? <laughs> is that, is she asking? Like, I, well, I'll tell her mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what, what Willie was asking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she hasn't seen him. So she no. doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about. No. So I'll, I'm a, I'll show her the, the picture. The moving pictures? Yeah. Oh, that is that is amazing. And Willie wants. Willie I think wants he wants what? one of you. Oh, where well, I am flashing my my, and she's like, <laughs> the shirt's half open already. No, not right now. Please, not right now. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> later, later, Anastasia. Later. Who will be taking pictures, you or him? Uh, he ain't going to be there because I ain't trying to be a part of that. But I'll take a picture for you. Uh, it's no polite way to ask. How long picture can last? Two, th three seconds. That is not going to work, no. Okay, for now we do flashy, flashy. Okay. <laughs> you have camera? <laughs> so what'd you do in Deadline today? Way, I was looking for a way to lighten this, this show up a little bit, so thank you, Puck. No problem. <laughs> this is not what this is meant to be used for. <laughs> what'd you do in Deadline today? No, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but I'm gonna do it. Fuck it. I'm, I'll fucking set the camera up. Okay. Damn it. Yeah, and uh, she uh, performs as advertised with a big lascivious grin as she does so. <laughs> Scott, even though he's not there, way back in the saloon, the other people in the party Skyler, are just going really uncomfortable. Skyler. Yeah. So, yes, you get the shot. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, she puts them away. Yeah. And uh, she leave. asks you to stay with her and get drunk. Um. I, I'll tell her I, another time. I. It's been a weird day. And um, I got some things I, I need to figure out. Uh, right. So, so another time, I promise. And she looks at you and she looks around to make sure there's really nobody looking. And she leans in and she says, if he wants pictures of other things, you tell him okay too. Yeah. I'm not. Nope. And she just like. I, well, I imagine it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> it tries to pat her on the shoulder, but it's like weight. Like she's so she, much taller, so it's like the look in her face is like a teenage girl and her first crush. She oh is God. gone in love with One Eyed Willie. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like pat her on the shoulder. I'll be like. <sighs> That's Vidanya for the moment, Anastasia. I'm gonna leave. Until next time. You show him pictures, yes? And she just kind of does, Alice just kind of does one of these as she's leaving. And you're just about out of earshot and she yells, they are nice, yes? <laughs> Alice runs around the corner, <laughs> just like, ah! You hear, you hear the banging and sawing start up again behind yep. you and we will leave there that there. And you and hear I'm, this one? looking for the sweet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I'm, I'm gonna... not playing this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna take the picture. I'm gonna take the daguerreotype, um, mm -hmm. and I'm literally gonna in the box that it's that yeah. it smokes in. I'm yeah. literally gonna open the door of the 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 Dan's office. Mm -hmm. Sit it on the sit it on the <laughs> closest table. I'm gonna say, can you? discreetly process this image and give it to Willie. And then yeah, wait. Yes, Miss Alice. And he comes Thank like he's, he's confused. Then, he's in Dan comfort mode and he comes over and there's a little bit of smoke coming off of it still and he's yeah. like and you see him heading towards the dark room. Yeah, she's like, I told you it smokes when you Yeah. yeah whatever. And I'm shutting the door. I'm taking my box and then yep. uh, shutting Quit the door and leaving and going yeah. back to the you're about halfway back to the saloon when you hear Dan Comfort's voice just bellow over town. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> there is an important point that needs to be brought up here. <laughs> Did you see in the picture Anastasia's face? Because if oh, not, yes. there's yeah. okay. Oh yeah. yes, it's. I said yeah. I very specifically said there was a lascivious look. So yeah. it's not just a show; it's a show and a promise. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> yep. Okay, yep. it's between consenting adults. It's all fine. Yeah. No, it's all. Good. I didn't consent to this. <laughs> well, you weren't there. Our love is beautiful. <laughs> Don't pretend you can't handle it. <laughs> And cheeks glowing with the red glow oh of someone who knows something God. they shouldn't know. Oh, Miss Alice God. joins the rest of them at the saloon. And is I Willie think at the saloon? Uh, Willie, uh, by this point, you've dug your hole. And where were you going after that? After the hole, Willie's going to get something to eat and go to bed. It's been a big day. I mean, he's seeing Absolutely. stuff he's never seen before, or having experiences yes. that are just incredible. And shooting okay. with weird guys and full, collecting yeah. their medals like i mean this it's been a full day for a retiree Absolutely. <laughs> with this pocket full of weird medals and, yeah like and i mean signia that doesn't make yeah. sense you head yeah. back there so and so, with that okay yeah. go quick and i was just gonna say so if he's there when alice walks in she'll walk in go mm -mm, and then turn around and go up to her room <laughs> <laughs> oh. and with that we will take a short break Marty, Man. save us. Save us, Marty. Uh, retirement sure does sound nice. Uh, I won't be eligible for benefits for another 4,000 years minimum, but once I do, I'm going to go find me a Russian broad if Russia's still around. Anyway, we're going to head to your break. Y'all sit tight and watch these here videos. 
All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that break. Now for some more class and decorum. <laughs> like nothing happened. We had a perfectly normal first half. Yeah. yeah. And we would all believe that if it wasn't for the <laughs> bottom left-hand corner of the screen. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Sky? <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Take your legend ship, you bastard. Go ahead. Take it was good. I was happy to be a part of it. We're great storytellers. Mm. I knew you meant it. That was like that was like uh, that was like whole milk, right? Like that wasn't was, no skim was, milk shit. I'm yeah. a two percent man. I'm sorry. Oh my, my god! god. Whole you milk blasphemous, milk. blasphemy. That's why you had three. I'm yeah. living yeah. my whole best milk. life. Been in <laughs> oh, and with that dose of wholesome goodness, <laughs> attempting to rinse from his mind what is unrinsable, we return to our party, sitting at the evening meal table in the saloon, except for. Nope. You're, oh, you're just shaking your head. No. Okay. Yeah. Nope. I nope. I walked in, saw Willie, went saw <laughs> Willie, and then <clears throat> went. Uh, they bring dinner up to your room. Okay. As you walk past, you hear Lucius banging, crashing, and tinkering in his room. Um, I'll just kind of oh, as shit, I'm walking thumb. by. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. I'll just kind of give a keep at it, and like kind of a. As you knock on the door, you hear yeah, ow, 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 ow. I have concerns. I think you surprised uh, him in the side, closed on his wrist. Good. Uh, That's funny. <laughs> um, it's, man, you know, it's the price you pay as a tinkerer sometimes. Yep. Sometimes yeah. the tink bites back. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, and I'm going to spend the night um, tinkering and uh, trying to see. <laughs> unrelated to the first half but see if i can get these to last longer or bigger keep trying to figure that yep. kind of a thing out um or smaller or see if i'd like see how small i think i could like okay. pocket movies kind of a that that's an interesting idea uh give me a tinkering roll just to give me an idea of what you figure out i got a pretty good idea but let's fine tune that with an that's actual, a that's a good role. Yeah. Uh, you figure out a couple of things very quickly. The making the exposure longer is just a matter of having a uh, a larger lens uh, and a smaller aperture. In other words, allowing smaller amounts of light through, and it will give you a longer exposure. You figure with the technology you've got, it probably wouldn't be difficult to do ten to fifteen seconds. Uh, as far as miniaturizing it, that seems to be more about uh, getting the the liquid, the paint, down to a fine enough texture because it's got ghost steel in it, right? So it's gritty. So there's a, it's it essentially pixelates if you get too small because the individual bits of ghost steel screw up the image. So making really little ones is going to be difficult. The smallest you can still see what's going on and still see the movement is about the size of a postcard, sort of three by five. Bigger right. is just a matter of making a bigger camera. I mean, that's, that's what she spends her that's night just doing. Math, right? she, just, yeah. <clears throat> she um, mm -hmm. kind of looks at different things. Um, yeah, it's all Pythagoras. It's all triangles at this point. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out sizes. And I want to read the doctor's journal, but Lucius has it, and he seems busy. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. <laughs> well, well, there is one other thing in your possession. Which, oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, shall I go downstairs for a minute and give you a minute to think? Or shall we just... She, well, she's going to tinker for a bit, and then and then once she's kind of like got that worked out, she's just... Because she's trying to figure out how to trigger it, the mm -hmm. badge. So she's like poking it, flipping it, like... Okay. 
So we'll give you a couple hours of tinkering and then that happens. I just want to get a good idea of the timeline. So yeah. And she's, when she goes to bed, it's under her pillow too. Like, so she, it's not, it's not going anywhere. Thank far you. From her. Very good. Good to know. So downstairs, uh, Miss Alice comes in, makes a silly face, goes bright red, grabs dinner and heads upstairs. Well, I don't know what that's all about, but I'm, I'm gonna have some food. <laughs> Uh, I order, I order some food as well as a, uh, milk shot for Jet. <laughs> there's, there's like eight empty milk shooters in front of Jet already by the time you walk in. And he still doesn't look happy. Just slightly bloated and gassy. Well, we went together. <laughs> he's, he's a little intolerant. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. You went up to get one, came back, there's already seven empty. Don't kill the pain. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so is is Willie with us, or did we? Did he come? He, you no. guys arrived, and then he arrived, sort of at the same same time ish. And then just as you were sitting down, Miss Alice walked in, and you went, "Hey, bye." <laughs> and she just could not, for whatever reason, she could not make eye contact with Willie. <clears throat> She kind of yeah, looked at right. the two of you, bright red. I don't know. She seems a little high strung to me. Yeah, that's an understatement. And I just start eating food. Yeah, yep. I start eating food Pouring as well. Dinner, yeah. But, uh, you know, Willie pours silence. So after a while, he's just like, so, Ellie, I understand you're pretty popular around here. A lot of people uh, seem to know you. You know, when you have a train blown up on you, you do make a name for yourself? I imagine so. Probably not the kind of notoriety one would enjoy. Not particularly. Usually I'm known because of my uh, excellent bartending, but unfortunately the bar got run over by the train. Ah, I see. You're real good at I saw a gentleman who could do it and he could flip the bottles. It was It was the damnedest thing. Do anything like that? I have a couple party tricks. Pick up on the trade, slow nights. Oh, well, I'd certainly love to see that sometime. Well, maybe you will. To be honest, today I'm not quite feeling it, but... Oh, but I, I do not mean to impose. You do not have to perform for my enjoyment. Uh, just if I ever happen to come across it. Well, if I can find a job, I'll be sure to uh, perform all you'd like. <laughs> I'm not so keen for work these days. I just got to keep myself busy being retired now and all. Mm. Deputy, enjoying mm. dinner? We were all, uh, <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> it's pretty good. I, uh, I, I don't. He's trying so hard, to <laughs> like a. a trying to maintain because he didn't say hardly anything at the train yeah mm -hmm. he's just trying to think of how to balance the fact that he had a super serious situation earlier and then he knew what was also happening <laughs> it's been a weird day <laughs> it's been a very weird day <laughs> and uh how how was your evening sir <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question <laughs> it has been quite nice I'm good I'm I don't good. think I've met so many wonderful people coming to a new town <laughs> there's just a breath of relief <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I and I just kind of stopped for a second and I turned to Ellie and I'm like why are we here? Getting dinner? Why are we here? Like, why are we still here? I know offense. Oh, I always forget your title. Colonel. <laughs> Colonel. Well, is there anything else I can call you that I might be able to remember? Colonel's fine, deputy. <laughs> oh. 
All right. Well, I, maybe sir occasionally will when I can't remember. Well, we're buds, so maybe I can let it slide. <laughs> no offense to you, Colonel, but we were in a crane crane, a train crash. And uh we uh we ain't left here since there's all kinds of stuff keeping us here, but really I was out looking for a fugitive and and now here I am sidetracked in this little town and I haven't seemed to have left yet. Well, despite what Willie previously thought, we really first Campbell asked for our help and then one thing led to another. We haven't had a quiet moment since we got here. I guess it's just something about this town just keeps you here. The death rate, why else would anyone stay? Um, I've had a drastically different experience <laughs> from, <laughs> from your descriptions. But I have learned some things in my time on this earth. And sometimes you are deposited in exactly where you are supposed to be and you stay there until your duties are so reconciled. And perhaps this is one of those occasions. I'm starting to think you may be right, Colonel. At least for me. And I mean, Jet, you said your experiences, you'd never seen anything or experienced things that you have here. Something about this town ain't right. I'll drink to that. Take another milk shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grab one of There's a cow going, come on! <laughs> just, Willie's looking at you both like shooter milk and he's like yeah strange <laughs> so yeah uh, how many how many empties are sitting in front of Willie by the end of dinner oh he's had, he's had a couple he's, 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 they ain't milk no they, they ain't milk uh, yeah. Willie likes to drink his whiskey uh, but he doesn't go excessive with it he has he has a bit with dinner and yeah. then another nightcap to go off before bed. And then he has his shots for his men before bed. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but he is going to. Now, you said you were looking for someone, Jet. A fugitive. You ever heard of a son of a bitch by the name of Blaine Suggins? Or the Suggins yeah. gang? Have I heard of the Suggins gang? Uh, as generic sort of badasses with associated rumors, yes. Okay. I have heard a thing or two. Kevin, would I have just from rumors around talk around the bars and stuff? Uh, they're not really from here, right? Uh, it, they were in Arizona. I'm from Arizona, and that's yeah. where they came to. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, let's for the purposes of this they are just on that edge of famous like you've heard of them but they're far away so you kind of didn't pay attention right I know about them it's just like yeah. the Suggins boys did it again yeah. <laughs> if you go to Arizona watch out for them Suggins boys that'd be yeah. about that's the yeah well but, now Jet I've heard of these Suggins folks and just a little bit by reputation as you hear of people uh, Miss Miss Ellie, I, I imagine you heard of something as well. Just talk from boys. You really can't trust what a man will say when he has too much in him. I've heard as far as he's killed a man to he killed a dragon. So I know their name only. I believe that is true, and I believe both cases are entirely prob probable. Maybe not entirely possible, but probable. What did they do? They tried to turn over my hometown. They killed the sheriff. They killed many good men. We ran them out. They came in saying they had some claim to the town that was given to them or granted to them or they bought. It was some kind of, I don't know. It, it wasn't right though. And they tried to take it by force and we we didn't let them. Good on you, son. 
It's the only reason I'm really out here is uh, I'm I'm looking for him specifically. The rest of that gang, I believe, will fall apart if if oh dice are rolling. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, if you're looking for him and we find ourselves in this town, you've been appointed deputy. I don't expect you to abandon your post. What are these sugging boys afraid of? What are their what are their cracks? What are they afraid of? What do they desire? How can we leverage these things to make these sugging boys come to you? I, to be honest with you, Colonel, I, I don't know much about them and as far as how they operate. I just know that they came into town looking for a score, looking for, like, they wanted wow. the town. They, they believed they had claim to the town and everything that was in the town, all the people, all the buildings, everything. I believe they're just some gang trying to take claim of whatever they can in the rowdiest way possible in the worst way possible i see the wheels turning with marshall kevin so i'm gonna <laughs> as you as you pause at the end of that sentence you have one more memory oh sound effects are perfect as the suggins gang was leaving town they were they ran away before they should have you guys weren't ahead in that gunfight like you've always thought you were. You've got this sort of distance now, and you can see you they shouldn't have run. But when they ran, there was a shape in the air behind them. A raven. So black, its feathers looked blue. Here to share with the class. <laughs> I don't think I will this time. Very well. How long ago was this? Oh, it couldn't have been more than a month ago. It was, I mean, it's the whole reason I've been out riding around looking. I ran into Miss Alice on the lines. I was heading out east northeast a little bit just trying to find some kind of large city that maybe the larger what what am i thinking of like the the <laughs> the rangers what what was the yep, gov texas was... rangers yeah would be the southern in the area that you were from it would absolutely be the texas rangers it was the non-military police so I was just looking for any kind of rangers, enforcers that, you know, in a larger area that might have heard of where they were so I could go track them down. That's really the only thing I'm after other than your generic brand of justice out here. Although generic is um, the light way to put it here. Well, now that is interesting. Now, Deputy, I, I don't abide vengeance. It's not a gentlemanly pursuit. But a man does not leave a debt unpaid. So, all that ghost rock sitting out in that train wreck out there, that's pretty valuable stuff, isn't it? You don't see that everywhere, now do you? And I can see what he's doing, and I, I just kind of look at him, and I'm just like, I appreciate your help, Colonel, but I'd rather track them down in their home, much like they did for me in my town. I'm not looking to bring them on other people. So as much as I want to bring them out of hiding, I'd rather not risk the poor folks here that have already dealt with a lot more than a lot of other people. I knew I was right about you. You got a good cut on you, boy. Thank you, sir. And with that, <clears throat> the three of you finish your dinner and is there anything any of you would like to do before going to bed or are we just going to call that a day I'm getting to you young lady <laughs> well, I just, just want to like, clarify that uh, yep. I, 
what I um, imagine what Alice would be doing at this point is what I've pretty much been doing uh, the last mm -hmm. few minutes, which is going through notes. And she's, <laughs> she's probably got like little sketches of, of mm -hmm. Baptiste and all the notes that she's been taking. Um, and you probably what would happen and... is that she, yeah. she'll probably work until she just falls asleep amid. Perfect. Like, that works magnificently well. The rest of you, the rest of you, finish dinner and head upstairs. Uh, I was actually the who was working the person who is working the bar. Yep, it's this is a, basically a husband and wife uh, saloon restaurant um, bar slash hotel all in one, and generally speaking, it's her that's downstairs here. So yeah, it's it's the lady of the house. Okay, well, uh, Ellie is terrified of going to sleep tonight mm -hmm. from both the badge and from what she learned from Charlie. She's going to have a nightmare about something. Yeah. Uh, so she just kind of goes to the barmaid and is just kind of offers to help clean up free of charge. Just give her something to do to put off going to bed. And she looks at you and tilts her head. This is a middle-aged woman. Like I said, this is like a husband and wife team. They're older. She's probably 25 years older than you, so twice your age. And she kind of looks at you and says, oh, honey, whatever it takes. If you don't want to be alone, you can stay here all night. And she just hands you a rag to start cleaning tables. Like, she just, she gets it immediately. Of course she does. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to kind of just look at, say, wave goodnight and just, I'll see you guys in the morning. Have a... Good sleep. So you guys head upstairs and you stay downstairs cleaning and she is, the lady behind the counter is respectfully silent. Just She's just there. Like she's that presence in the corner of the room. Like this is my room. This is a safe place to be. And she just lets you putter and do whatever you want. She just completely leaves you alone. <clears throat> Eventually she shoes out the last couple of customers. And just when you're tired enough to think that, you know, you can't keep this poor woman here anymore, you're going to have to let her go. There's a scream from upstairs. Miss Alice. You got a map out and you're putting pins and maps in places yeah. where he probably was and measuring distances and checking dates. And yeah. it just, it doesn't make sense he's too many places too many times there's no way he could get from there to there why is he always there but he's never in the stories he's never in the pictures he's never yeah. in the descriptions yeah, but I imagine she's probably got there. like pages ripped out of her notebook and like tacked to the place yep. like tacked to oh, where yeah you they... got the you got the crazy person wall going with all the notes and the stuff that he, if half of it doesn't even make sense to you anymore you've been going so hard at this and the whole time, this badge has just been sitting there holding down one corner of the map. And you've touched it and poked it and yelled at it and screamed at it and did all the things that Lady Alice does, Lady Alice, Miss Alice does to get things to listen. And it fucking won't listen. And she's, and she's alone, so there's no pretense You're banging of banging it likeness. against the table like, you piece of shit, give me yeah. your secrets. And eventually you just throw it on the table and have another drink and just <laughs> head down right in the middle of the map. And your hand, as it comes down, touches one finger to the edge of that badge. And it starts. That hand is maybe 16, 17 years old. It draws the pistol, and the pistol is shaking. Bang! He missed. Bang! He hits. Bang, bang, the hand settles. Cut to the next scene. The hand is maybe 20 again, but this time there's no shaking. This time it's the metronome you're used to already. And over and over and over. First by himself, then with others, two and three wide. Gunfights in streets, innocents being shot by accident, horses being shot in the background, gunfights turning into running battles through town. 
over and over and you want out there's nothing in the world you want more than out of this but you can't even open your mouth to scream because this voice this head that you're in is just fixated and they're dropping and dropping and dropping and every single one of them is that moment of pain afterward you didn't count didn't have to 147. Dead. The last one is different. The hand is shaking. The hand is old. There's spots on it. Wrinkly skin. The gun comes up shaking again. Fires again. And misses. You see the round coming back. In slow motion. And you watch it. You leave him, You watch through his eyes as he his head turns. He watches it hit his sternum. <clears throat> Everything goes silent as he watches his chest implode. <clears throat> He's dying, and he knows it. The hand drops the pistol, comes up, and grabs the badge. It's out of sight, but you know that's what it is. He reaches out and turns, <clears throat> and to his side, a much younger and much healthier Baptiste saint -Oran. And his hand slams the badge into Baptiste's chest. And you hear for the first time the voice, That's yours now, son. And you fall back in the dirt. And the last thing you hear is Baptiste saint saying, God bless you, Wyatt. And it all goes black. And you're released and you scream and sit up in your bed or on, at, your chair, at your table. The map is still in front of you. In the process, you threw the badge across the room. It's over in the corner. You can feel it over there. The rest of you hear the scream. Yeah, I like immediately, I grab, pull, I'm already like around there. So I pull out my pistol. And just <laughs> up the stairs and yeah. I just burst in. Alice! It, it's just Jet and his long John. <laughs> <laughs> He just bursts out and just with the gun, just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Willie, like, like just, it's a shuffle. It's a weird yeah. shuffle. It's the last of the three by a long ways. Yeah. The, he had to the put his army, slippers on. Yeah. The army revolver. Yeah. Slippers on, army yeah. revolver hanging at his side in his hand. Yep. Cocked. <laughs> yep. Miss Alice, um. the tears streaming down your face. You look at the door, and there's your three companions. Lucia's standing behind them quietly. Alice doesn't say anything. And Miss she's... Ellie, and you were the first one in the room. You're also the only other one that's touched the badge. Her face says it all. You know, I mean, this is why you're not sleeping. Is everything all right in here, Miss Alice? Miss Alice? Oh, I think Anna froze. Shit, oh no. Oh no, she does look frozen. Yep, she's frozen. Okay. <laughs> she just backs out of the room, just no, 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 no. She knows, right? Oh, there she is. She's back. Oh, she's okay. back. I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> I almost had to be you for a second. It was terrible. <laughs> Earn legend chips. I don't have the talent. <laughs> Every session, I've got to crap out once. So you are, uh, yeah, you were the first one in the room. So you saw her face and you know about the badge because you touched it. You know that's why that look is on her face. Uh, I just like I run up to her and I don't I don't touch her I don't get in her bubble but I just kneel next to her and just kind of go Alice 
you're here, it's you, you're not there, you're not him, just breathe and just kind of keep quietly kind of talking to her, kind of trying to reassure her and recenter her here. I'd appreciate it, miss, if y'all would keep my secrets. Miss Alice, you here. Alice, she, like, she, like, clutches, like, I imagine Ellie probably wears, like, a collared shirt. Yep. She clutches, like, the collar of it and pulls her in and she says, They can't know. None of them can know. And she just lets go. And mind you, again, Alice was in her room alone, so she was, she would be in her, yeah, like, you know, the, the white pants, yeah. you, like, you know. Are the, the two boys are in here as well? We're in the doorway, I assume. One of them in his drawers and the other one in his slippers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like a, it's like a, like a nightgown, a like, you know, the yeah, old yeah. fashioned, like, yeah. I, I know how that is. At some All point right. around 45, you you have one of those. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Right. have this a robe. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, fellas, let's leave these women to uh, sort out the, the evening terrors. Uh, I also oh, say yeah. um, uh, she'll kind of it, yeah, just, a, just a bad dream, boys. I'm certain that it was uh, for you to scream so terribly. Uh, deputy, shall we make our escape? And I will, but I'm making one hell of a scutinize because if anybody <laughs> knows about bad dreams, so that's yeah, what I'm um, looking for. Yeah, you don't need to make a check. Um, this was a bad dream in the way that your dreams about Raven are intense dreams. This wasn't just a bad dream. There's something more going on here. So I'm going to close the door and take Jet with me. Yep. And after the door is closed, I turn to go back to my room and I, you know, butt of the gun scratches my head a little bit. <laughs> a little bit like, so you know there's something they ain't telling us, right? Yeah. I, uh, I've had a dream like those. Or should I say... A dream that didn't end for a very long time. I imagine it involves a mutual friend from earlier today. I think she's the only one that ever pulled me out of it, Colonel. I'm hoping she's pulling you out of it, not dipping you in. But I'm inclined to trust your judgment so far. And what I want to know is how we're going to figure out what they ain't telling us. Because it's feeling more important the longer I stick around. I trust you, Colonel. Um, but I don't know if they do yet. I'm, uh, I'm going to talk to Miss Alice in the morning. Because I don't think... And I think back to watching her stab that guy in the throat. And all the times I've seen her... <laughs> <laughs> It's like a flashback. It's, it's like flashbacks to all the times, all the things I thought she was, or yeah. things I think she never would have let. Oh yeah. Me. And I was like, I, and I was about to say I don't think she'd ever keep something from me, but then I stop and I'm like, I don't know, but I do think I've been with her a little bit longer, so I might have a better shot of figuring out whatever it is. Yeah. Here's the thing, son. Folks that come from that crust, their secrets have secrets. What's the point? And it's just a <sighs> I don't know. I prefer a simple existence. I'm a I'm a very, very simple man. So we will sort this out at a more respectable hour. I just wanted to make sure you and I was on the same wavelength. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to get to bed now because this beauty just doesn't happen. <laughs> Takes a lot of work. <laughs> and it still doesn't happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> Not if you ask Anastasia. <laughs> There's only one lady that counts. Yeah, she thinks you're beautiful. And you get some rest and you be careful with your friend now. 
course. And uh, I'm shuffling off to bed feeling, I, it's like in the initial get go of it all, I was fine. But then after it all, I saw Ellie in there and whatever, like comfort in her. And I was with everybody else. And I was just like, I'm in my long job. <laughs> 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 it's just two men in their and, fucking well, sleeping in, clothes in my, talking to each other in the hallway. <laughs> in my head, it was one of those sort of those those one piece. Things. Yeah, like, like the, the big red. Yeah. yeah, with the flap, and you had to kind of hold them up so you didn't sort of come out of them in places. <laughs> it's so yeah, all that was fluffy. Gun in one hand and sort of a handful of jammies in the other. <laughs> and he's got the and it's the th you know the scene where they got the boots on. All they're wearing is their boots and their long guns. And oh yeah, and he's had his hair. In. He's had his hat on all day, so yeah. his hair's doing this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he's got fluffy slippers and one of those night caps <laughs> with like. <laughs> 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 And like the long, like Ebenezer Scrooge dressing gown that he wears to bed. Yeah, which is all funny until Willie turns his back and heads down the hall. Yeah, yeah, but, but the it's not funny anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, and the bruises. God, I hope I turned first. <laughs> so. The two of you go back to bed. Lucius mutters and stumbles and uncomfortably makes his way back to bed too. Lucius has had a day of feeling like he wasn't supposed to be where he was. He got chased out of everywhere. <laughs> the two ladies are still in the room. Wait till he sees what job I got for him. <laughs> yeah, um, Alice is just like, like, after that initial moment of clarity where she was like, they can't know, they can't know. She's kind of back into the like, and the only thing that she keeps saying over and over is he was there. He was there. Like that's all she's. Alice, talk to me. Who, what did you, what did you see? Was it the badge again? More and more gunfights. With it keep going and keep going. 147, you're going through it for about the eighth time in 10 minutes. It's just, it won't leave. Was it, was it 147 fights or dead? 147 dead. Okay. 149 rounds fired. He missed twice. Yeah. His first and his last. Um just with the endless repetition 47 dead you hear an endless litany in the background latin and french every single one of them blessed and sent on their way By Baptiste Saint Laurent. Am I just? Is she just now? Kind of, as as she's going through it over and over in her head. She's he's just... he's not invisible. He's the priest. And Ellie will kind of see her. She's again. She's not saying much. She she starts. Because the map's on the wall. Uh, Ellie, the yeah, the, the, the map's she, on the wall. There's pins all over the place. There's notes that only make half sense. Some of them are scribbled so quickly that they you can't even read them. They're pinned all over the wall. And she Al starts like reaching out and 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 tracking like okay, the okay corral is here. And she's and she's she's going through all of the she's going through these gunfights over and I'm, they're just and on repeat. Ellie, you can see her just ramping just escalating she's about to explode i'm just kind of looking at the map. did you have you slept while we've been here it's only been three hours alice and i just kind of grab her shoulder and just kind of spinners that she's looking at me take a breather before you faint i think i already Ooh. did that you fell asleep because you were overworking yourself with this. Now, I promised I wouldn't tell anyone. I haven't even told Jet. But you've 
gotta let me understand why. What did you see? Who was there? What's all this? Who who wasn't there? And she points to the badge in the corner. I imagine you can see it. It's just like yep. Yeah, it's got a it's got a way of being seen. I know. Alice, it's at this point that you realize you're standing there in your bloomers. I don't care. She doesn't yep. care. But that's like that's how far gone you were. You just realized yeah. you're not even properly dressed. Um, and she she will kind of do like a, like kind of like oh. I mean, you're covered. This is the yeah, wild west, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um. And she. She'll she just points. And she says, "I know whose it is." Was the voice says was and she and she takes her like notebook and it's not it's not like a full size notebook but it's but she as big as letters she can fit on it she writes Wyatt Earp and stabs it into the wall on the map in was the place it? where he died yeah Alice, wasn't you asked me to ask Charlie about a Wyatt, didn't you? Did I? Chessie. No, it's uh, Charles. You asked Chessie. about Chessie. Chessie. That's the wrong no, name. That's okay. It's all good. That's okay. It's a long time ago. Um, okay. So many names. Who's who's Wyatt? Who is he? Why does Baptiste have his badge? He was there. You would all know that Wyatt Earp is a famous lawman, but he's famous in kind of an ambivalent way. He was known as law first, rule second. If he thought you'd broken the law, he'd just kill you. So he's kind of worshipped and not worshipped at the same time. He was a man of his times, for sure. Yeah. Maybe even what the times needed. But he was not by any stretch of anybody's imagination a good lawman. Yeah. The way that it's currently defined. By people like Jet. Jet, yeah. Um, he... Baptiste was there. I can hear him. And she, I imagine she kind of every once in a while when 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 like the images are replaying and there's a, there's probably that as everything's replaying probably that last gunshot that he missed she probably every time just flinches. Mm -hmm. He was at one of the gunfights that the badge showed. Ellie. He was at all of them. How is... I saw hundreds when I touched that thing. How could he be at all of them? How long ago did Wyatt Earp die? Uh, for the purposes of this, about 25 years. History, history buffs may now yell at me in chat because the OK Corral didn't even happen until 1881. Shut it's, up. It's my game, now. my rules. Yep. <laughs> um, and was Baptiste in that last one? Was he, was he like he is now? Almost. Okay. He was sick. Very sick. In fact, sicker than he looks now. Um, he was... Ryan's gonna kill me. Yeah. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> um, Tee -hee. <laughs> he was... He was there, he was... I can hear him. There's something Blessing. else you can 
Yeah. There's some of those blessings are associated with gunshots, not from Wyatt. From forgiveness and redemption. But those ones were blessed too. So here's an interesting question. Alice has the gift of gab, uh-huh. which means I can pick up spoken languages very quickly. Yep. So would I be able to, hearing this over and over, pick up what he's actually saying? He is repeatedly doing the proper uh rites of death in the in the holy church he is doing the latin version of it but every once in a while he cracks and he can't control his emotions and when those moments happen he slips into french if ellie could hear them she's had a similar experience with him but she can't um well she's getting ready to find out um he was he's listen the dead I mean there's so there's I can you can hear the gunshots that I guess white freaking erp was making and then there's these extra gunshots and after those other gunshots you can he's he's doing the Latin rites of the dead. Well, sometimes... Just, just to be clear, he, he blessed all of them. Yeah. But some of them weren't quite dead. Yeah. So oh, okay, he yeah. killed Finished them, them and then blessed them, yeah. Um, and and so in Latin, sometimes French? I don't... He's... I've heard him do that before. I think it's maybe an emotional thing. I don't speak more than one language, but it's probably more of a comfort to hear your own. I mean, I imagine if it's, I've heard of people slipping into their first, first known language as a default when, without thinking about it. So, France. And she, she takes and stabs another pin into the wall in France. And she takes and stabs another pin in the wall anywhere that uh, she would know of, maybe, that Francis spoke in. I was actually going to suggest that you look at the map for a place like where the hell where the hell and it's obvious New Orleans oh shit yeah she stab stabs a pin there and she moves I imagine by this point Alice is so obsessed that she's she's got a pin like that's that's colored purple to, to rec to represent Baptiste, mm -hmm. and she moves a purple pin with a B on it to to New Orleans. You think it's from there? I mean, they there's a lot of French spoke down there, and he he mentioned that. He mentioned Georgia the other day when he was talking to Willie, and then she thinks of Willie again. And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> "I feel attacked." <laughs> man, just man, just sitting there watching a scene, and bam. <laughs> yeah, and she she kind of she says he mentioned Georgia. He did say he was from the South. I met him uh, ten years ago in Texas, but I. Ellie, I can't remember it. It's like it's blocked. 
And then when I was trying to think back, there's other parts of my life that are just small fragments that are blocked the same way. I know you don't want to hear this, Miss Alice, but that sounds very unnatural. I hate that damn word. Listen, you know me, when we first arrived here, I didn't believe in any of that stuff, but... I mean, even a woman of science as yourself has to admit there are just some things in this town that don't make sense. Baptiste, his entire life doesn't make sense. Nothing about him makes sense. Why the hell is he here? Why are any of us here? And why has he been carrying around the badge of an old sheriff ranger for that? I know the answer years? to. That I know the answer to. Care to share? And she flinches again at that that last gunshot in the scene of... Yeah. The one that missed. He was there when Wyatt Up died. You feel it. I imagine she kind of recoils back. You see that bony hand reach forward. You hear that coughing, hacking voice. Bless you, Wyatt. He was there and Wyatt gave him the badge, told him it was his now. And Baptiste took it. And she, um, Alice kind of closes her eyes and she tries to hone in on that memory on any of them and see if that, if the duster look uh, that Wyatt was wearing looks like a dust, the du- one of the dusters that Baptiste had. Interesting. No. Okay. He was there, Ellie. He was there for every damn one. And it occurs to you. Every one of Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. You didn't see those. But he was with them. How long? I mean, he was with them at the party, too. Why would a... I get wanting to bless the dead, but that seems a bit of an odd choice for a priest to be following around a man like that. I really, Ellie, I really don't think he's that kind of a priest. (sighs) I'm starting to get that. Look, I've really already said more than what I should. But the only thing that I know is when that man gets back to town, me and him need to have a long fucking conversation. I pity him to tell you the truth, Miss Alice, fearing your wrath. Darling, you ain't seen nothing yet. Count myself lucky for that. And there's kind of a thunk, and you both look, and you're both kind of equally surprised to see that Miss Alice has driven a letter opener about four inches into the wooden table. Miss Alice, I know you've had quite the fright, and you're deep in this mystery of Baptiste, but perhaps some rest before you damage something worse than a table? Perhaps some rest. And Miss Ellie, 
you take your leave. You close the door behind you. Miss Alice, I assume it takes a while to come down. Yeah. Sort of. Do you let yourself get sucked back into it? Probably. Or do you turn your back on it and try and rest? She, she's, she, well, okay, first thing, that badge is like a huge responsibility. And so she doesn't want, she's going to, like, at this point, she would use something to pick it up so that she doesn't yes. actually touch Thank it. Thank you. Yep. Um, and and put it somewhere safe, like in her maybe, bag. Maybe not or, under your pillow. Yeah, probably maybe not. Uh, somewhere safe, but close. Um, and then so she'll she'll kind of put it there, and then. She she takes what she intends to be a final look at the maps and everything and probably more than likely ends up getting sucked back in because it's just the nature of who she is. And you're gone. And the rest of the night passes. And there's going to be a brief retcon at the start of the next session because Jet went to sleep. But right after that, the next morning, the two of you, first, because you're just awake, hear a scream from outside. And that's where we'll end tonight. Whew. Wow. Ooh. First half funny, second half not so funny. Sorry, Ryan. Damn, Damn it. Kevin, you gotta just leave it off like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's ruined. Oh, we'll do jet stream next. Marty needs his fix, Daddy. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> you sound like Marty, Willie. you can see in 7,000 different dimensions. I'm sure you've seen this dream. Yeah, but I like the way you talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, y'all, I don't fuck. I don't got anything for tonight. Kevin, end the show. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, sure. Just throw that back at me. I guess sure. Um, I want to thank these amazing people because uh, we did it again. And uh, ladies, a legend chip each, please. Uh, I know I'm just hurling them out here, but this is, you know what? I mean. When it says get a legend ship for exemplary, exemplary role play, they did not have the mercenaries of mischief in mind when they made that <laughs> rule. Yeah, so I was thinking uh, about this tonight. Um, you notice that, like, Puck never gives out inspiration to us. Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> to be Whoa. fair, this is a mechanic in this what game. This? I have to do this. Is this... Oh, well, I've been ambushed. Right. No, let me, <laughs> let me you finish. You thought you felt attacked before. <laughs> let me finish. What I was saying is, is like, yeah, it's kind of, uh, if you're just going to be giving out those legendary chips, you know, as normal, it's going to create a problem. Because, like, I, I exemplary it, but... role play is the status quo <laughs> the Mercy I know. You don't, I know. You don't get rewarded for doing your job, okay? <laughs> Fire, kind of high quality show. show we do here. That's, that's, that's right. the puck spirit. Expectations of higher than this. Well, I'm sure I will become a hardened to the talent over time. Look, I mean, but you for... guys got superpowers now, and you're going to get charges for superpowers for exemplary role play. So that's going to happen. <laughs> Whatever. So works. just quickly through the list again, uh, Hannah playing Miss Ellie. Thank you again. At least we made you laugh for a little bit today. <laughs> That's a nice, uh, it's a nice change of pace. In the middle uh, there a little bit. Down little bit. at the end, thumb in the air. Uh, thumb? Did I say thumb? Oh, I hope I said thumb in the air. Two th okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to know where those thumbs have been. Wait till you get the picture in the morning. It's going to come under your door. It's uh, going to be, oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> you guys are just going to see Willie sitting in the corner go, ooh, 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 ooh. Miss Alice, get your mind out of the gun. <laughs> Uh, can he hold the 12 by 12 plate in one hand? That is yeah, no, that's... 
I was so excited. That's all the time we got for you tonight, folks. Thanks for <laughs> wow. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Very quickly, the top of Sarah's head. Thank you. And Sky, the long suffering Sky. Oh, the I love being here. I do. <laughs> aren't you, like aren't you glad show. I came to this stream? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know what? We, we had a lot of fun tonight. Thank you to all of you. Check out us out on YouTube and on Facebook and all of those places. We are everywhere, socially media wise. Mercs of Mischief. Uh, night after tomorrow, two of you get to do this all again with a totally different dungeon uh, master. Uh, the Pontus Rises. Which one of you wants to talk about Clockwork Dominion? Clockwork Dominion will be kicking off same bat time, same bat channel as the usually usually happens here. Uh, we will be playing with the creator of the game. Yeah. And the producer will be there too. <laughs> yep. I, can't see him. I keep forgetting about him. And I get to fight with Sarah over whether or not I get to shoot a teenager. Uh, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to shoot <laughs> good. I'm going to shoot. Was, the conversation's going to go, you hold on to that healing magic you got there. I'm going to go shoot the boy. That's a pre- <laughs> <laughs> That's a pre I hate Robin. I'm going to try to find a cat to pet. So that will be my mission for yes. the episode. <laughs> the scandal. Look, we still oh. need to measure that circle, man. And measure that circle. Oh, <laughs> the Look, precise well, circle. Yes. We'll, we'll measure circles, we'll pet cats, and we'll shoot boys. That's the kind of high boys. quality show. That's what you can expect. I'll shoot boys. It's not if, a Victorian England gothic horror until somebody I have a, starts shooting children. I have hey. a detailed plan on how to shoot this boy, and it is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but so if, come watch if you, us. Break if you seat. watching at home would like to play with some of these idiots, um, you can <laughs> donate $10 or more to our Extra Life Ow. campaign. <laughs> Um, anyone who donates $10 or more between now and when we uh, reach our goal will be entered into a drawing to win a private session with Puck as your DM. Um, uh, remotely, of course, because you know Damn people it. live in different places. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to um, drive to your house. <laughs> your choice of player will join you as well on that, their game. So, you know, donate money. It's for a good cause. Extra life. Uh, show up at your door with an arm in. full of books. I'm here! <laughs> <What's up? laughs> I we didn't tell you what night we were coming. Between <laughs> y'all. Surprise! <laughs> All right. Uh, I hate wow. It. And uh, yes, yeah, Sky at bottom corner, the long suffering Sky is now his new nickname, the long suffering. The uh, long suffering uh, Sky. Is in charge of our YouTube channel, and we'll see. Uh, if this episode gets posted or not. Uh. <laughs> it just disappeared. Where'd it go? <laughs> why, is the, why is there only an hour and a half of content? In this it episode? will monetize my it ass. It will be demonetized at the very least. <laughs> oh, man, as long as, you, as long as the first well, 10 seconds are okay. Funny, it's funny you should bring that up. That goddamn autoplay. Why don't you bring that up? <laughs> It's fucking playing poke. Someone's just playing Pokemon shows on Twitch. <laughs> like, how is that Twitch content? Anyway. How dare you play Pokemon no, on Twitch? No, 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 not playing Pokemon. Like, there's just episodes of Pokemon. They're just streaming oh. the show. Well, no, it's Twitch pirate. presents, but it's still like, why does it have to autoplay? They do Twitch? that a lot, though. <laughs> we're we're getting off track. Twitch. We love okay. being here. We love it. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. And with that, no. so that they don't do it to us first. Shoot you next week. Good night.